Today's gospel video is coming from the footbridge. I'm standing on halfway between County Limerick and County Clare. And over there, you see that house in the, house in the distance. It's just the outskirts of Castle Connell. And over there in the far distance there in the field, you can see a man walking his dog in the County Clare. Beautiful spot just overhead the River Shannon. And I want to share God's word with you today again and encourage you to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 17 is a, record, a recorded prayer that the Lord Jesus makes to his Father in heaven. And almost every word in John chapter 17 is the Lord Jesus speaking to his Father. I want you to see today, said John 17, verse 3. He gives the definition of eternal life, or life eternal. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I'll read those words again. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The world in which we live in says, nobody knows till they die. You can't know till you die where you'll go. That's the direct opposite to what the Lord Jesus Christ teaches in his word, the Bible. He says when speaking to his Father in heaven, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So Jesus says, people can know the Father in heaven and that they can know him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent to this earth by the Father in heaven. So the opposite to what Jesus teaches is what we find in the world. That's why we need to be in the Word of God. That's why we need to turn to the Word of God. And the Bible says itself, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We look at another verse that Jesus uh, shows us in John's Gospel in chapter 10. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That more abundant life that Jesus is speaking about is eternal life. It's the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When I was a young lad growing up in Castle Connell many years ago, and I often came down here to the bank of the Shannon, and if it was a summer's day, we'd be lined up there in the bank, and we'd be sitting down, and we'd be swimming, going in and out, having our swimming. But I never knew back then that you could have eternal life and the assurance of eternal life right now here on earth. I never knew that you could know God personally, that you could have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I never knew that because no one told me. I knew about saying my prayers and I said my prayers. I felt a little bit better when I said my prayers going to bed. But if someone said, where did your prayers go? My answer would be, to be honest with you, I don't know where they went. But you know, today, as a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, saved by grace, I know that when I pray to God, that God hears me. I know that I can call upon him in the day of trouble. I know that any time of the day or night, I can call upon the Lord because he's my saviour. He's my, he's the good shepherd. He looks after his own. In John's Gospel in chapter 20 and verse 31, the Lord Jesus is speaking and he says the following, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. That's why the Word of God is written for us. That's why there's a record that God has given to us. These things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that believing ye might have life through his name. This whole world lies in wickedness and to have a living faith in the Lord Jesus Christ means going against the current, swimming against the stream. But it's faith in God that counts at the end of the day. It's trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, who died on the cross so that we who were dead in sins could be saved by grace, could have our sins forgiven and be washed in the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross. I want to ask you today in this gospel video, have you had your sins washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ? You know the blood that he shed while hanging on that cross? Sinless perfection, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Have you had your sins washed in the blood of Jesus? Unless you have your sins washed and cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will never go to God's heaven. You will never go to that place of eternal bliss and joy and happiness. But you'll be lost in hell for all eternity unless you come to Jesus for that cleansing, for that washing, for that forgiveness. Let me tell you today in closing, with God there is forgiveness. The Lord Jesus Christ died and he suffered and he bled in agony, but he died, he rose again on the third day. He died so that you could be forgiven. I'm here today standing on this bridge and I'm a forgiven sinner and I pray that you too would know the joy of sins forgiven. God bless his word.